Good morning. Buenos dias. How are you there? We are reading through the book of Galatians. We're in chapter six. But before that, a word from our sponsor. No, no sponsors. Just want to mention that not only is my book, Fan the Flame, available, should you be interested. Number two, a night of worship at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. It's a new uh, release, new CD, amazing music. You can get it wherever you get music. Spotify, iTunes, uh, um, YouTube, just some of the best songs, some well-known songs now, I Speak Jesus, but a version of it with the congregation involved, very special. And then some songs you've never heard. So I recommend that to you. You like to listen to music? I love to listen to godly music. I like music where the people are worshiping God and not performing. How about you? I don't think Christ died on a cross so we could perform for each other. What do you think? You know, when someone is, you know, wants to show you how talented they are, rather than just worshiping God, that's what draws you in. When someone performs and is showing off their voice or their steps or whatever, then you go, eh, okay. But when someone is kind of oblivious to you and it's just worshiping God, singing to the Lord, who oh, does it draw you in and lifts you? So hopefully that CD will help you. Hopefully this reading will help us all today. Galatians 6, we got the first verse memorized. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit, capital S, should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. But watch yourselves. While you're restoring that person, Watch yourself. What would that mean? Or you may also be tempted. Well, it could mean the obvious, that when you restore people and sometimes they go into what they got involved with, sometimes the mere mentioning it, reliving of it, it can be a temptation. Can be a temptation. Could stir up the flesh. But the main application must be this. What do you think? But do it gently, but watch yourself, lest you be tempted. Tempted to what? Tempted to think you're all that and holier than thou and self-righteous because now you have that brother or sister at your mercy, as it were, if you look at it the wrong way. Like, I can't believe this. I really thought better of you. Now you have become victim of Satan's snares. Pride cometh before a fall. Nothing worse than self-righteousness. So how can we avoid that? Someone I read recently had it, I think, down pretty good. They said this way. If you compare yourself horizontally, you can get self-righteous and think you're all that. And we get proud, full of ourselves. But if you don't look horizontally and you just keep looking vertically, down we go, humble. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother or my sister, but it's me. Remember when the Pharisee went to the temple with a publican, a known sinner, um, and they were there together? And the Pharisee, he wasn't comparing himself upward. He was comparing himself horizontally with this guy. Oh, Lord, do I thank you I'm not like him. I mean, really. I thank you that I tithe and I give uh, to the poor in different ways. I never miss during the holy days going to the temple. Not like him. He went home undealt with by God, unforgiven by God. But you know what the other guy said? He went like this when he got in God's presence. He was looking vertically. He went like this. He beat his breast. And he said, have mercy on me, O Lord, a sinner. 
When you look vertically, it keeps us humble. True? Because even if we're Christians, that we're not everything we should be, so it tempers us. We're not so quick to jump down someone's throat. But if we just compare ourselves horizontally, we can get full of ourselves. And I know you've heard me say this, but it's worth saying again. If we're possessed by an evil spirit, anyone is, the Bible says they can be cast out. But when you're full of yourself and proud and self-righteous on top of that, those were who, the people who plotted the death of Jesus Christ, self-righteous Pharisees who compared themselves with others, didn't get in God's presence. Isn't it something that although Paul was the greatest Christian and knew how God had gifted him and called him, he yet had that other side where he could say, but I, the chief of sinners, I wonder what, what that was about. It certainly brought, brought a beautiful humility in him. Not that we live in condemnation, not that we live in guilt. No, it's not that. That's how people go, well, I'm not saying anything like that. I'm not going to have a broken and tender spirit because I'm one of the king's kids and I take authority wherever I step. Oh, fiddlesticks. We are in Christ. We are more than conquerors. But if we're honest with ourselves, it's all by grace. If left to ourselves, if left to yourself, what would you do today? Without the influences of the Holy Spirit, you self-destruct. I know you. I know myself. Without the Lord. So that's that beautiful, by the way, that's the best worship comes from people who are down low and who compare themselves with God, you know? So Paul says, make sure you don't get tempted to start strutting around because of someone else's failure. I know people, I think, I might be wrong, I'm not gonna name names, but I've been around people, I'm almost sure they rejoiced in another person's mess up. And that is sick. Dude, that's sick. You're happy because someone else messed up. You better get back to the Bible, to God. We all better repent if we actually get like, oh, did he? Oh, that's a shame. No. We should weep over one another when we mess up because we're all in the same family. When your brother or sister mess up, messes up or is in trouble, do you rejoice or do you reach out to try to help? This is all important now because we need in the Church of Jesus Christ people who are guided by the Spirit so they can be doctors who mend bones and don't break people's bones. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.